What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Rich, back to bring your NBA player props for Wednesday, November 16th. Yesterday, we talked about Anthony Simons over his points at 20 and a half. He came through for us in the fourth, and Kevin Herter over 13 and a half points against the awful Brooklyn defense. It was a great night. Kevin Durant also went under if you played that one, and unfortunately, Julius Randle did not come through for us, but that's okay. That's why he wasn't a core play. The data looked fine for it, but I wasn't 100% sold, but I like to present some of these things to you guys just in case you do like it, and we're considering it. Some of the data was looking decent, but not a core play, but the core plays went 2-0. We're looking for the same thing again tonight. There's a lot of news that we will need to watch that is breaking, so lines are still going to be moving, so depending on when you watch this, things may change, but we will probably drop some stuff in the comments a little bit later based off, you know, Luka Doncic being out. We haven't seen the new lines for the Celtics after Marcus Smart was announced out. So there's a lot of things still to work through, but let's dive into it all right now. For all the high flying action, take a step back and relax. It's time to count that money. The NBA props. No look any further. You know what time it is. Presented by Prize Picks. NBA props. Let's count that money, man. So let's dive right into the model and talk about what we're looking at today. Starting off with Lou Dort over his fantasy score. Looks like a really great number. He scored 20 points in each of the last two games. That's corresponded with Shea Gilgris Alexander getting more involved in the passing game and he has been diming up some of those players. We've seen Giddy's been doing a good job too. So there's been a lot of good things happening for Oklahoma City. Now Beal will be back today. So Bradley Beal is back, which for me actually instills a little more confidence in a player like Shea and Dort to go over because OKC has been playing some pretty good ball as of late and Washington without Beal is not the best franchise, not the best team. So going against them, there is a small fear of a blowout. But with Beal back, I think it'll be a much more competent offense, run a little bit more effectively. And we know that Beal can still put up points. He is coming off of the COVID list. He was already cleared, but he needed to get his conditioning where it needed to be. So he should be fine, but maybe a little sluggish to start. We'll see. But I do like Oklahoma City always because they allow, they force the most turnovers in the NBA. And that's been great for a lot of these props. Like you see up here, blocks and steals for Shea is right at the top. I do like Dort though. I think the fantasy score is a good number. I also like the points, rebounds, and assists at 19 and a half. Both those numbers look really good to me. The guy that is a must-core play, in my opinion, is Mason Plumley. Mason Plumley's points look phenomenal today. They're up against the Indiana Pacers, who is the worst defenses versus centers in the NBA. It's the second worst matchup for any position, regardless. The only one that's actually worse is point guards versus the Lakers. They allow a ridiculous amount of points to po opposing point guards. Mason Plumlee's hit nine points in four or, or three of four games. He's pushed in four straight, pushed or hit in four straight. He's been getting 30 plus minutes every game, which is great to see, which is kind of surprising, but we will take it. He's also looked great in PNR with LaMelo Ball since coming back and the biggest thing here and the biggest point that I want to drive home every single center who's played 20 minutes versus the Pacers this year has scored in the double digits so off of that information alone, you have to look at Mason Plumley and say, yeah, I want his over. For some reason on the books, it's 9.5, it's plus 100. I don't know why. It looks like a great spot. It's one of the best matchups on the board. We talked about Kevin Herter and how it was a smash matchup for him last night. I think this is the exact same situation for Mason Plumley. Literally one of the best matchups for centers in the NBA. And, you know, you could look back and see Embiid's played them, Jokic has played them. They haven't killed them, though. They're not skewing this data too heavily. I think Mason Plumley's in a great spot to go over. He should score double digits pretty easily. And if he gets to 10, you get a nice hit there. In my opinion, it's one of the best plays on the board. It's absolutely a core play for me. And I also like Lou Dort, whether you want to go the fantasy points or the points, rebounds, and assists. Like I mentioned, scored 20 points in each of the last two games. I think he's being more heavily utilized. I think that Beal coming back does provide a more competitive environment for this game. And he's been hitting this number in four straight for the points, rebounds, and assists. And he's hit in five straight for the fantasy score. He can do a little bit defensively, but he's been playing a little bit on the perimeter. So we'll see how much he gets done. He's not a big steal guy the way that Shea is literally two and a half blocks and steals every single game. But he gets it done sometimes, and I do think that the havoc that the Oklahoma City Thunder have been causing to opposing offenses has been shown for all the players, not just Shea or Giddy who can get it done, but Dort and some of the other players have been getting it done as well. He's got a four still game. He's got a games with multiple blocks. He doesn't do it consistently, but he has been fine. And so if you do like the fantasy score, I don't mind it. The points, rebounds, and assists is a really good number. They are, I believe, the third worst defense at allowing rebounds to opposing shooting guards. So that is great for Dort to go over his rebound number. 
So I think it's in a really good spot. It's three and a half minus 140 on the books right now. The points, rebounds, and assists, I believe, is juiced to the over. Yes, right here, minus 125. We do have it as a slight over in our books, projected for right around 21 to 24. So I think he's in a good spot. You know, I think that we talk about Dort, and it's it's been hard because he hasn't been so consistent. But I think we're starting to see a trend break for him, and things start to go his way. I really like this number a lot on prize picks. I think it's in a great spot. I would definitely be targeting the Mason Plumlee points over and the Lou Dort uh, points, rebounds, and assists over. I think both of those are great numbers. Now let's talk about Shea, who every day we want to take the over for his points because he's just been a monster every game. The 28 and a half is heavily juiced to the over. So if you like Shea's points, again, with Beal being back, I think provides a more competitive environment. I do think there's a great spot for Shea to put up another 30, bo- 30 burger tonight. Or if you want to go after the fantasy points, it's at 47 and a half. He's been going over this number in four of the last five. I believe he's gone over 50 in those games he's gone over. So great spot for Shea. A little bit more variance in the fantasy score, but we know that he can get it done on the defensive end. So a lot of things pointing his direction. So I do like that one. If you want to go after the points, because we've talked about this before, if he's going to get the fantasy score, he's probably going to get the points. So I don't hate that either. Ray also likes that number. That's kind of one he was eyeing this morning. We talked about Jason Tatum, but we haven't got new lines for him since Smart was out. He was at 30 and a half points. We didn't mind that one against Atlanta. But one of the lines I do really like, and I wanted to emphasize here, another one right at the top of the board is Trey Young's assist at 8.0. I get that, you know, he's been struggling a little bit from three, but Trey Young is still a dimer, man. Like, he's still someone that can put up in bunches. And the Boston Celtics are without Marcus Smart tonight. So the guy who would probably be his primary defender is now no longer there. Derek White can pose a bit of a threat, but not much of a threat. As you can see, the last five games, Trey Young is averaging 9.2 dimes per game. He's playing around 36 minutes. Eight is just an egregious number. Um, I've talked about this early in the season. When I see him anywhere under nine, I am all over it. I know that he can do this. I don't even know why on the books. It's only eight and a half. It should be higher. I understand Boston's a good team. They play great defensively, but without Marcus Smart, who's arguably one of their best defensive players, it's just not a good matchup. So I think that Trey Young is in a great spot at eight. You know, at worst case, you're probably looking at a push. He's a guy who is vying for double digit dimes every single night. I think this is a great number for Trey Young if you like it. It's not a core play for me, but I think it's a great number. It's definitely flex viable if you like it. And on top of that, if you want to talk about it, kind of a questionable play that I didn't even throw on this list, but I will talk about it here. It's DeAndre Hunter under his points. They're at 15 and a half right now. And the Boston Celtics are literally the worst matchup in the NBA in terms of points. They only allow 16.7 points to opposing shooting guards on the entire season. The lowest point output of any position for any team in all of the NBA. And he's going to find a way to try and get 16 points on that defense. It's going to be tough. He's probably not going to do it. The number is very low though. So it's not one I necessarily want to take, but it was one that intrigued me early on. I may take a look at the under because the matchup is awful for Hunter and he can shoot his way there but he's been a little inconsistent lately but I believe he's coming off a 24 point game so it's not one that's a core play but was one I was looking at make sure you guys check the inactives because we're still seeing stuff break I already talked about Luka and Smart who are two big ones that are waiting for Tyrese Halliburton as well as someone we're looking out for and Donovan Mitchell is day-to-day so be mindful of that because He's a game-time decision. And then if he doesn't play, Darius Garland looks good. Spencer Dinwiddie is definitely in play with Luka out. On top of that, Christian Wood revenge game. Maybe look at that as well. So that's kind of the plays we're looking at today. As always, if you tail, give prize picks hell. And if we fail, do not bail. Make sure to drop me a like and subscribe for future content. If I made you some money last night, that would be great. I really appreciate it. Because that's all I ask for, man. A little like, maybe a subscription. Maybe a comment with some of the plays you like. But yeah, let us know down in the comments what you guys are playing tonight. Let's talk about it. We'll probably add some stuff in the comments later. But the core plays, definitely Mason Plumlee points over and Lou Dort over his fantasy points or his points, rebounds, and assists. And then Ray really likes either the fantasy score or the points for Shea Gilgris Alexander. So those are the core plays for today. Let's cash tonight and let us know what you guys think in the comments. We'll see you guys tomorrow with more picks and more bets. I'm out of this thing. Peace.